At the ECIO sessions this year, there was much emphasis on treating of oligometastatic disease, which goes along with how MSK interventional oncology has evolved from treating palliative lesions to treating for local cure. And multiple sessions looked at the current literature on treating oligometastatic lesions from sarcomas in particular, in which we have a major role. At the moment, the most important things happening in MSK tumor treatment is the curative intent in oligometastatic bone disease. If you look back 10 years ago, speaking about curative intent in this subgroup of patients was like sailing in uncharted waters. Ever since the success of percutaneous ablation in other organs and pathologies, a few brave guys started applying ablation in oligometastatic patients with bone disease. And they reported very high success rates equal with efficacy in other organs. So the benefits of treating musculoskeletal lesions with interventional oncology versus more traditional, whether it be surgery, radiation oncology, is multifold. One, they can stay on systemic therapy while we treat them. Two, is that it's very minimally evasive. Three, is that we can follow that with imaging and you know see how well we do local control. And four, patients don't have to stay in the hospital. It's usually an outpatient procedure. Traditionally, oligometastatic bone disease has been treated by surgery and radiation therapy. Surgery can be technically challenging, technically morbid, it is governed by higher complication rates and by prolonged recovery time and usually delay systematic therapy. We can combine percutaneous ablation with fixation techniques or cement injection whenever necessary in the spine or the peripheral skeleton. So when you're Treating musculoskeletal lesions, you know, and you're going to do ablation, I think the biggest factor is the size of the lesion and its location to important structures. The biggest thing is not necessarily where you're putting the pros, but how you can stay out of trouble and not take away somebody's motor strength to their, you know, lower extremity or upper extremities. At present, we have numerous ablation techniques in the market. If we see the level of evidence in the literature, we can say that we have to wait about IRE and HIFU in order to provide curative intent. At the moment, we do have cryoablation, we do have radiofrequency and microwave ablation. The outcomes are more or less the same for all three techniques with very high success and efficacy rates. In the near future, we should be able to clearly establish criteria for performing percutaneous ablation in oligometastatic bone disease. Furthermore, we need to clearly define the timing of applying percutaneous ablation within a multidisciplinary input. We need to have a strict follow-up strategy for all these patients. And last but not least, we need to define a therapeutic algorithm mainly for the peripheral skeleton. In the next five to 10 years, I see musculoskeletal interventional oncology continue to increase in adoption. As I said, it's been a slow process, but even at these meetings, you can see the musculoskeletal sessions are much more uh, attended than they were five to 10 years ago. And I also think you're gonna see it as part of those national or international guidelines and algorithms for the treatment of both painful metastatic lesions as well as oligometastatic lesions.